Hey guys, welcome back to another Tech Tip Tuesday. Today we are talking about intake air temp sensors, also known as IATs and MATs, as they relate to the EFI system. So obviously there's a few different ways that you can build your vehicle. You can have a naturally aspirated, you can have a supercharged, turbocharged, and then within those subgroups, um, specifically in supercharged or turbocharged, you can have intercooled, non-intercooled style vehicles, you can have air to water, you can have air to air, and intake air temps continuously come up as a question for us. Today we wanna to talk a little bit more about that as far as where you should put the intake air temp sensor on which style vehicle. As far as intake air temp sensors go, um, I always prefer to have a sample of an intake air temp, which is the most accurate about what's going in the runner of your vehicle. Intake air temp, if you're not familiar with it, is a very critical sensor, um, especially on vehicles with dynamically different intake air temps. Um, you, you know, from naturally aspirated to a turbocharged application, and definitely a supercharged application, a varying intake air temp should, and does vary as far as how your tune-up is built. So for instance, if it's 40 degrees outside with your naturally aspirated vehicle, you're gonna have a lot more of an aggressive tune-up than you do on a 110 degree day. Your tune-up is only going to be as accurate as your intake air temp sensor. So in short, your intake air temp is gonna deliver valuable data that basically tell you how aggressive you can get on fueling and timing given the intake air temp coming in. We did a really cool video on uh, old school intake air temp like a lot of people use which are uh, found in a lot of EFI systems and they basically are derived from a 93 uh, Cyclone Typhoon GM style vehicle. Those intake air temps are particularly slow. Um, one of the reasons and draws to Rife sensors that made us purchase a company is this really cool intake air temp sensor. It's more fast and accurate instead of being a very slow um, sensor. It shows real time intake air temps and moves around. If you watch this video, you can see more about it, but this is absolutely 100% an investment you should make in your vehicle because if your intake air temps are slow, um, say they're 20 or 30 degrees off and the tune-up is thinking that it's a lower intake air temp than it actually is, you could have potentially detrimental um, timing or fueling in your engine at that particular time in the run, which can actually grenade an engine or hurt it or whatever in between, or even just give up power. So you should definitely watch that video and you should definitely get some rife intake air temps. Back to the video, I didn't wanna to get too salesy on you, but it's something I feel really passionate about. Uh, you should definitely look into these, but like I said, watch that video. Back to the vehicle. So on a naturally aspirated vehicle, you can get away with putting your intake air temp sensor anywhere. Some people will put it right in front of the throttle body. My personal preference is to put it in the actual intake. You're gonna get a more accurate reading as far as air temp going into the runner of the intake, and that's essentially what we're trying to get at. Um, if you look at this intake um, off of my Nova, the intake air temp sensor is literally right between the two runners. So the air being forced down in the runners and the air hitting the intake air temp is, sensor is essentially the same air. Why that's important is that on a uh, boosted vehicle, uh, particularly this one that has a intercooler on the intake, you would not want your intake air temp sensor out here. It's gonna be drastically different than what's coming into the engine. So on a boosted vehicle, your intake air temp sensor absolutely has to be after the intercooler. Now you can definitely measure before and after and that's going to give you an idea on the efficiency of your intercooler as a whole and or data points um, throughout the run or throughout boost levels to see is my intercooler efficient at the max boost that I'm running or the low whatever and uh, you can kind of gauge and decide if you need an upgrade or whatever from there. Uh, but definitely on a boosted vehicle, you wanna have your intake air temp sensor after the intercooler. Now on an uh, air to air that might be up front, you could definitely have it on the pipe coming into the throttle body. I know a lot of uh, factory style intakes don't have a spot for an intake air temp sensor to go anywhere in them. Uh, so that's definitely okay. Um, I just prefer to have it right in the intake. So if you have an aftermarket intake and you can fit one in, um, you know, we sell these Rife sensors in eighth, quarter, three eighths, and metric uh, thread patterns. I'll put a link to those in the description below. You guys can check them out. Um, and then we have a variety of different wiring options. So on an air to 
water intercooler. Um, as I mentioned before, you might have an external air to water, and if that's the case, you can still put an intake air temp sensor right before the throttle body. But as I mentioned before, I like to have a true accurate reading of it right, in, right before it goes in the runner of the engine. This is how I've ran the intake air temp sensor on my Nova for years and years. And uh, one of the questions I always get from people are, you know, with the manifold being aluminum, are you gonna have heat soaked wrong intake air temp? And uh, by proof in the pudding, I will say no, that's not an accurate statement. I don't get a uh, heat soak style um, temperature reading from the intake air temp sensor um, being in the aluminum. It reads true and the way these sensor design, sensors are designed, they're not prone to doing that. Um, maybe there's some on the market that are, but this one uh, definitely is not. Another question I get are people use intake air temp sensors to cheat the system. So what I mean by cheat the system is kind of what I was talking about before. They might place an intake air temp sensor where it makes things look better so they can get more aggressive with their tune, like if they're not a tuner. The thing I warn about that is it's just, you're really robbing Peter to pay Paul. If the intake air temps are high, you need them to basically pull that timing or add fuel or change the tune up in a way that's more safe. By moving it around to kind of trick the system, um, you're really looking at danger and you're looking at a lot of uh, destruction that could be ahead in your future. So by making the intake air cooler or hotter um, to just kind of like follow a narrative in your mind is not always the best idea especially if your tuner has things set up one way or another. Um, and if you're the tuner, you probably want the most accurate reading so you can just understand what's going on in your engine. As I mentioned before, intake air temps are important on a supercharged, a turbocharged, or a uh, naturally aspirated vehicle. You should be paying attention to them. Your tune should be calibrated to adapt to them, unless for some reason uh, you have a whole team of tuners and they're like, we know what it is outside, we'll lock the tune down and not worry about it. Um, that's a very slim margin. Some of the like pro mod racers and stuff might do that. Uh, but this is a good place that you can not only set up um, a correct tuning table um, that will adapt from day to day, but it'll also give you a little bit of safety net in what you're doing. Um, for some reason your intercooler pump doesn't turn on and all of a sudden you have 250 degree intake air temps, you want to know it, you want your tune to be safe as a result of it, it might catch something. A lot of people don't have their IATs on the screen um, or your gauges so you're not watching them. It's something that can be very helpful and you can utilize in your program to not only maximize performance but also maximize safety. So that's it guys, an intake air temp sensor is pretty simple. It's a zero to five volt sensor. Um, as I mentioned, there's no reason to be using those old part store 93 Cyclone Typhoon uh, Turbo Trans Am sensors anymore. These new Rife sensors are faster acting, they're more accurate, and they're gonna give you more of a real picture on the tune-up in your vehicle. That's exactly why they were built, and that's exactly why uh, we acquired Rife and we are making these in-house now. Thanks for tuning in. If you have ideas for the next Tech Tip Tuesday, drop them down below in the comments section. We live and breathe by those comments. That's how we get ideas for the next Tech Tips. We want to bring to you information that's helpful to you and your program or your build, and that's what we're all about. Until next time, we'll see you later.